Hey everyone, so I picked up this bike pretty cheap recently. It was 110 New Zealand dollars, which as it turns out, it was a really good buy. Um, the auction was pretty vague and there was only three photos on the, it. so I'll show the photos here. I think also because it was disc ticket as well. Um, so people didn't really know what it was, but I think it would probably sell for, I don't know, th about three, four hundred dollars if it was a bit tidier and like in decent running condition and everything maybe with the factory decals on it so it's got heaps of tire clearance on the bike it does need a bit of work here and there i won't be using this free wheel anyway i'm just going to set it up fixed so i'll just flip the rear wheel around it's got some razor bars on it so that's not factory factory it came with um, some drop bars the fork has heaps of tire clearance these gator skins are 32 millimeters but as you saw there it just has heaps of tire clearance one thing I didn't quite know, even after picking up the bike, is if these were Sugino or Sugino cranks. Um, I thought they were just like a messenger one or something like that, but they are 144 BCD. The bike has some BMX parts on it, so Shadow Conspiracy grips and bar end. Quite a nice Tech 77 lever as well, just one, because it was just running the rear brake. Um, it was set up single speed as well. So I'm gonna be running it fixed so it's got a flip-flop hub, so I can just flip the wheel around and just throw it in. It has a cog on it and everything, so it's all good to go. One of the other things I want to change was just the bar. Just something to like a little bit wider and a little bit more rise. Just to sort of see how it would feel. So this is just a DMR wing bar I had sitting around. So most of this bike I'm going to be building up with part spin things, like these Ori grips. I would prefer some ESI Chunkies, but um, I just had these kicking around from when I had them on the Alpine Stars. I'm taking this Azumi chain off. kind of sucks. A mate actually said that he's had issues trying to keep rust off the Azumi chains as well. So this freewheel has got to go. There's no point keeping it on if I'm just going to be running the fixed side anyway. So just throwing it on the freewheel tool giving it a bit of a twist. Pretty happy that it came off with no real issues, no dramas or anything. So I'm guessing someone lubed it up before putting it on. I'd never heard of this brand before, but after Googling it, I mean, it's made in USA, so it's gotta be pretty good, right? And the hub has seal bearings on it. And they feel pretty smooth. I just gave them a little tap because I think they had a little bit too much tension on them. So sometimes you can just tap the axle and that sort of loosens things up a bit. Avid Shorty Ultimate Brakes. These are a really nice brake. It's only got one, obviously, because they were just running uh, one rear brake, which is okay with me, because I just run a front brake when I'm running fixed anyway. And I figure it's got removable brake posts, so I might as well just take those off. From my BMX days, I'm used to putting like the Allen key down into the post to take it out, but yeah, these were the external ones. So the paint is pretty bad on this bike. It's just been scratched up and everything. As you can see here, there's actually like a little dent in the top tube as well. I'll try and point it out here, but it's quite hard to see. The rest of the bike is in pretty good condition. Just the paint has lots of scuffs all over it. Um, but yeah, we're just running through this build really quick. So I put on a wider tire here. This is a CST Traveler tire. So the frame even has plenty of tire clearance. So it's about a 42 millimeter tire. Same in the front, it's about a 42. It's a Schwalbe Smart Sam. I really like these tires. They're nice and rounded profile, so they still turn nicely, but off-road they grip a while. They grip a while. Just left to go is putting a front cable stop on for the cantilever brake. I prefer to use like a fork stop one so like you run the cable outer down to like a fork um, bolt <coughs> sorry but um this wasn't an option here because i didn't have one sitting around so normally if i need to modify like a headset spacer or something i'll use my uh, pipe cutter but uh because of the concave sort of shape to this top cap or spacer it wasn't going to be possible so i had to bust out the hacksaw but it all went together nicely no real issues, just made sure it was nice and flat and everything, and chucked it all back together. 
So something I didn't know if the stem was going to be about the right length, but I decided just to run it and see how it goes anyway. Now because we're running a headset cable stop, um, to get the cable the cable outer to route nicely, the best way to do it is like with a V-brake noodle or something similar. But So the ones that I had that didn't quite fit nicely, you can sort of trim them and stuff, but it gets a bit finicky. But you can get these flexible ones. They work okay. It sort of softens the brake a little bit, but not to the point where it feels too squidgy or anything like that. So it's worth giving a try if you can find these flexible brake noodles. Um, like they're just cheap ones off like AliExpress or whatever. So putting the brake on now, really like using these brakes. I wish I had more of them, but I don't. <laughs> they're pretty expensive, um, as it turns out. But this came with the bike, so definitely going to use them again. So I thought I'd talk a bit about why I got this bike. Um, you might be able to see that it's a little bit different to what I normally get. So it's definitely it's not something that I would usually grab, but I think because of that I just wanted to see how it would go. So it's an alloy bike with a carbon fork, but it's a single speed or fixed specific frame, which I'm always interested in like fixed gears and like strange frames that pop up and that sort of stuff. But this was just in the right price range. So that was, that was pretty much it. I saw some other photos of them um, like online after I figured out what it was and they had racks on them and that sort of stuff. So I thought it'd be a really cool bike to put a rear rack on and just use it for commuting, not get it, not get too attached to it. Um, like uh, you probably know like once you build a bike and stuff you start riding it for a while you think oh, I don't want to lose that bike <laughs> but um I thought this would be something that I just wouldn't get too attached to um I thought wrong I quite like this bike now but I don't care about it as much as like some of my other bikes like the hard rock or something like that but um really fun bike anyway putting the chain back on now I'm just using the chain ring and the cog that came on the bike and we'll just see what the gearing's like. So putting the rack on now, the specific one that I am using didn't quite fit. So I just needed a little bit of extra clearance in the back here. So I just used this Presta valve nut. Um, I've seen this a few times, but Gary, of Gary's project, it's, um, he's used this a few times. So yeah, thanks Gary. It just keeps little things like that. Just keep it in like the, the front of your brain so you actually remember it. <laughs> so this is how the bike came out. I just used like a charged spoon seat on it and then some pedals off my other bike. And this is it. And I wasn't happy with it. Um, I don't know what it was, because it's kind of different or what. But I just, just couldn't get too into it. So I decided to strip it down <laughs> again. And then I put some paint on it. So as you can see here, there's got some purple and a bit of blue up the top with some fade. So I just scuffed the frame up with some, I think, 400 grit sandpaper. And then laid on the different colors. And we've got some ties as well. So this is a 29er by 2.0 tire in the front, and as you can see, it's still got plenty of tire clearance. This this frame of this fork is just insane. So someone actually mentioned that this pivot is supposed to have O-rings on it, because they asked, oh, does, does it still have the O-rings? And no, it doesn't. So I tried a couple of different handlebars and this Nitto for Shred seems to be the best but the stem length isn't quite right so I'll be changing that out to something a little bit longer. A 3T 4G stem. So this is, the previous owner said it was about a 6 degree rise or drop sort of depending on which orientation you have it. I tried it upright at first and it just didn't feel right. I like quite a bit of saddle to bar drop so I flipped it upside down. So I think I'm a funny proportion, I have no idea. I think my legs are quite long, but 
maybe my torso is short. Anyway, off for the ride now. This first part is going through Auckland CBD and then along the waterfront towards St Helia's. And then I turn around and come back a little bit. Cheers, mate. This part now is heading back into Auckland CBD. You can sort of see it off in the distance there, or you can definitely see it in the distance there. Um, so riding on the road, I really like the bike, but it seemed to really excel off-road. Riding fixed on gravel was just really fun. Um, I'm sure it's probably different riding down and up steep stuff, but um, riding along this flat gravel is just it's so much nicer on a fixed gear bike. That's pretty good. Yeah, I just really enjoy riding fixed. A little bumpy, but not bad. That's some beautiful weather lately. Check what these tires are like, sort of in some single track. Oh. So we are running with this side penny bag, but um, there's not much to it in it really. It's just to hold like a little bit of camera equipment and little things. It's a Nog bag. I got it for like $9 used. It's pretty beaten up, but um, the clips on it hold nicely. And, um, yeah, quite like it. It's a pretty good size for commuting and that sort of thing. Easy to get on and off. I might have forgot to mention it earlier, but the tyre we're using now on the rear is a Vittoria Randonneur 47C. Um, I think it's marketed as a 45. You might have been able to see in the clips earlier. But the front, we're using a Schwab Hurricane, which is quite a cool looking um, semi-slick sort of tyre. So it's got outer knobs on it, but a nice smooth centre ridge. And that's, yeah, 29.2.0. We can definitely fit a chunkier tyre in the front, but it's kind of unnecessary. And I think we'd look a little bit goofy if we have too much of a difference between the front and rear tyres. So I just settled for a 2.0. Mm -hmm. Cool, we'll check out some light single track. It's kind of still muddy. I've had some rain past week or so. But um, as long as we don't get pedal strike on any trees or anything like that, we should be okay. Oh, mud. <laughs> okay, okay. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> so stalled for a sec here. Okay, the rear, the rear is all clogged up with mud now. Oh no, 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 no. How is it still rolling?
Okay, the rear is definitely clogged up with my... Show you the mud. So the front has heaps of clearance, the rear, not so much. Didn't get locked up though, so. God, I love this bike. So that pretty much wraps up the video. I'm um, sorry I didn't film like all of the build and everything. Um, I wasn't really planning on doing this bike for a build, like a build video. So overall, I really like the bike. The, the tire clearance and everything under it is just insane. Um, it is a little bit too small for me, but with enough seat posts and stuff, like it feels really good. So I think this handlebar will stay on the bike. I'll probably change the grips and a couple of other little things. Maybe the stem length. I'll, I'll take it on some rides and see how it goes. It feels good so far. The Schwab Hurricane at front is really nice. I was really impressed with that. Um, it didn't wash out or slip or anything like that. So it was really predictable tyre. The rear, the Randy Newers are a pretty good tyre. They're cheap, so they don't really last as long as some of the Gator skins and that sort of stuff. But yeah, really happy with the bike. Thanks for checking out the video. The next one coming up is going to be like a, a bit of a fleet update, just to sort of show how my build, builds have progressed since the videos and that sort of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!